Hi and welcome to small group video for this week. We are launching a, a new sermon series this uh, last Sunday. Um, uh, four sermons, um, which is actually over the next five weeks because there's a, um, a parish camp, our weekend away is uh, partway through it. But um, over the next four Sundays that we're gathering together, we're looking at a sermon series called Little Christs, um, which refers to the uh, uh, quote that I quoted from C.S. Lewis. I'll talk about a little bit of that in a moment. Um, but we're looking at some core things that are really important for us to grasp. Some things that we talk about all the time, but um, I've noticed really recently in conversations with people, some people have joined us more recently, um, or but also um, sometimes I assume that uh, we've understood something uh, as a as a congregation, but actually sometimes it needs reteaching or reframing. Perhaps I need to put it in a different way to make sure that we can all really grasp some key concepts. And this first uh, uh, sermon I talked about, uh, on Sunday was about the gospel or the or the good news, the message that Jesus himself uh, preached. And we talked about different ways that uh, um, we've interpreted that over time. Um, and then I grew up with a message that said that the that uh, that was the minimal entry requirements to get into heaven when we die. That actually I believed that what Christianity was about was about getting people into heaven. Um, and you might have grown up with that kind of uh, thinking, perhaps you grew up with uh, um, an understanding that Jesus came to um, set the captives free and that actually it was, it's a gospel to um, alleviate for the poor. Now, both of those things are true, but they're not the main message that Jesus himself preached. And if you believe those, it has no natural tendency to lead us into discipleship, into becoming like Jesus. If it's got no natural tendency to leading people to become like Jesus, then it's not what Jesus preached. When I was in my early 20s, I was utterly frustrated. The life that I was hearing in Scripture, this fullness in this passage that we're looking at, again, one of the greatest, clearest passages on what it looks like to live in the kingdom of God, is broken down in Colossians chapter 3. And, uh, and I was reading this type of thing and thinking, I just can't get this. I, in fact, I, don't, I hardly know anybody who lives like this. And the church is so far from guiding us in, in at least figuring out how to do this stuff let alone build our lives around him in some way, let alone look anything like what Jesus was training his disciples to be like. And I got frustrated that my attendance to church was making no effect in that area. And I wanted to be transformed. I wanted to rid myself of everything that was ungodly. And I wanted to step into fullness of life. And in the Galatians 5 passage of, of, of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. But the gospel that I had, the understanding of Jesus' message, didn't lead to discipleship. Discipleship was an add-on. Becoming like Jesus was an add-on. And it was exhausting. I didn't know how to do it. But then Dallas Willard was really helpful in helping me grasp that actually the gospel, the good news, the message that Jesus preached was that the kingdom of God is at hand. And there's lots of passages we looked up at that, Mark chapter 1, Matthew chapter 4, Luke 8 verse 1, Luke 9 verse 1, Luke 10 verse 1, uh, right at the uh, beginning of Acts, uh, in Acts chapter 1, and then the last verses of Acts as well, um, and, and all of the parables the kingdom of God is like, etc. The main message that Jesus came to proclaim is that the kingdom of God is hand. He didn't come to proclaim that you can get into heaven when you die. He came to proclaim that you can get into heaven now. That God's power, God's goodness, God's kingdom is available now. It's at hand. It's literally like right here. Which means you can interact with it. It means that your kingdom can be submitted to his. That what he wants done can be done in your thoughts. Can be done in your body. Can be done in your relationships. Can be done in every part of your life. Your choices can align with his. Not my will, but yours be done. This is the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Where? Here, on earth, as it is in heaven. In heaven, it's perfect. It's going exactly according to God's kingdom plan. Everything that he wants done is done in heaven. But we have an invitation to have it happen here on earth, in my life, in my will, by choosing him. Now, I do wonder what kind of kingdom 
thoughts spin in your mind? What kind of conversation you've had around uh, the fullness of life that's available and whether you think that that's possible? I do want us to grasp that this is the main gig. And I love that quote from C.S. Lewis, and I'll finish with that now. He talks about that the church exists for nothing else but to draw men into Christ, to make them little Christs. If they're not doing this, then all of the cathedrals, the missions, the clergy, even the Bible itself are simply a waste of time. God became man for no other purpose, C.S. Lewis says. He says, it's even doubtful, you know, that the whole universe was created for any other purpose. We're supposed to draw people into Christ. That includes ourselves. And we are to be made and to help others become little Christs. To become like him. This isn't an add-on. This is what he came for. He came for your life. He cares about every detail of yours. He cares about whether you think you're good enough. He cares about whether you failed in the past. He cares about your marriage, your parenting, he cares about your job or no job. He cares about your body and your pain, your chronic fatigue. He cares about your feelings towards your parents or your friends. He cares about that. His kingdom is at hand right here, right as close as it can get. And he wants you to submit your kingdom to him, that your will would align with his will, that his will would be done here in my life as it is in heaven. Let me pray. Jesus, Jesus, come with your kingdom power and bless every space that we are gathering in, that we would know you close and that we would be encouraged and given hope that it is possible to live life like you. Bless our conversations. Bless us that we would be a church that looks like you. In Jesus' name. Amen.